Hi, this is Justice, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the shape of the brush, the grain of the brush, and the tilt of the brush. So we're going to go ahead and open up the brush creator again, and right here, this is a shape. The shape is kind of like a lens over the top of a flashlight. The areas that are black are going to block the light or the paint. The areas that are white are going to let it pass through. And the areas that are gray are going to let it kind of pass through. The lighter it is, the more light will pass through, and the darker it is, the more it'll block out that paint coming through. If we click on the shape right here, you can see we can pick different. These are 512 by 512 PNG grayscale images. If you want to make your own custom brush shape, there's a really easy way to do it. There's a little bit more complicated way to do it. I'm going to show you the complicated way first. Uh, you go here and create a new canvas with a size of 512 by 512 pixels. And you can choose the white simple canvas right here so that you don't have uh, texture or deckled edges uh, affecting the brush shape that you make. Click OK. It's going to look like this. Anything dark that you paint is going to block that brush shape. Let's make one that looks like this. A downward facing Pac-Man. And let's go over here and choose shape. And we're going to choose import selection. Now you can see this is black in the center, which is going to block the color from coming through. So we can just click invert. And then let's go ahead and test this out. We can clear this layer and we can actually use this brush immediately. Pretty cool. Now what you can also do, let's go ahead and clear this layer. Um, let's make a circle. And we're going to go here into Brush Creator and we can just simply hit Import Selection. Now depending on the size of the canvas, this is either going to make a small shape or a large shape on how close that gets to that 512 by 512 area. You can also isolate this. Let's go ahead and drop this down, make this a little bit different. And now we can use the selection tool to select an area. And let's go here and choose import selection. And that's going to import the selection that way. Those are the three different ways that you can create your own shape and easily make new brushes inside of Revell 4. With the very easiest way, just for clarity, uh, is just draw something on the screen and then use the selection tool to select the area that you want to be a brush shape and then click on the import selection button. And that's the fastest way to do it. You can actually load your own image, whatever you want, and it'll put it in here. A larger image takes more power. So the 512 by 512 image size works well. You can also find that by going to show library folder, brushes, shapes, and see the files that are right here. You can add your own here as well if you don't want to import it somewhere else. All right, so you can see we switch here. You can see right up here, you can see the brush preview. We see the triangle again. Let's go ahead and stay with the triangle. I'm going to explain a couple different things here. So this whole area, not just the white part, is being used. The black part is also being used. So if we draw a little line, we can see these are not touching. And they're not because spacing right here is keeping them 100% apart. That means that the 512 by 512 PNG is touching from end to end. So this black corner is touching the next one. If we were to decrease this to roughly 50, these would overlap 50%. And you can see that they do. If we bring this down to 25%. These will overlap three quarters of the way through. And if we get down to four, they're going to be overlapping all but 4% of this 512 by 512 image. Which if you do that math real quickly, it's about 4%. Mm -hmm. If you have a stylus that has tilt, this shape can also be turned using tilt. Choose none, follow trajectory, pen tilt, and pen rotation. If you choose pen rotation, it will look at your stylus and say, okay, do you have pen rotation? Which means you can twirl the pen and it will twirl this shape on the screen. 
If you don't, then it will select for you pen tilt, which means that as you tilt your pen, the shape will rotate with it, or follow trajectory, which just means that the shape will follow the path that you're drawing with your pen. We can also do this with the grain. So the grain can follow rotation as well. Now I've picked a grain that's a little bit easier to see. So here I'm gonna tap on the screen, you can see the grain. And then down here, follow shape size and shape rotation. If I turn these off, you're gonna notice that we're gonna get the same size pattern every time. Draw across, you're gonna see the same size if I tilt the pen, it's still going to be revealing the grain underneath, and the grain won't track with the rotation of the brush. So we're going to click on Shape Size. This is going to make the grain grow and shrink with the brush size, or with the shape size. And then here we're going to do the same thing with rotation. So now if I tilt the pen, you're going to see that that grain is going to rotate with the shape as well. And I like that. I think that's a really powerful feature. In Rebel 4, there's been an increase in the number of shape and grain images that you can apply per brush. If you want to add another set of shape and grain, you can just click this Add Image button and choose a new shape or a new grain or both. You can now do four. And this is a pair. So shape and grain, I'm going to tap here. I've created this already. This is number two of four, shape and grain, shape and grain, shape and grain. So now if I select a different grain here, that's going to affect only number four of four, not three of four, two or four, or one of four. Let's go ahead and set this back to make it a little easier to see. And close this. Now as I draw across the screen, you can see we have these spaced out at 100. So it means it's going to show 100% of this image, shape and grain overlaid, and is going to go sequentially through these. Typically, this might be set to a spacing that is lower, so you're creating more of a brush stroke with this. For now, for demonstration purposes, we're gonna keep this back up at 100. Inside of here, random pen pressure and pen tilt have an additional option. We're gonna select pen pressure. Note that we have one, two, three, four different shape and grain sets. So we're going to go down here to the bottom and you can see image sequence. This block of blue, this pressure range, so right here, if I press lightly, it's going to make a circle every time. This black area, unfilled area, is going to do nothing. If I apply more pressure, these areas are going to be triggered. This is Image sequence one, sequence two, sequence three, sequence four. We want all of these to be triggered with light pressure. You can bring these over here and let's leave a big area where nothing. I press harder and I have to press very hard to get to this last shape. And this works for all three of these settings here for the randomizer, the pen pressure, and the pen tilt. So there's three options underneath both shape and grain. The first one is rotate, which if we're using just a circle or a square, you're not gonna see that, but with this spot, we can see that pretty easily. Flip and invert. And invert will just take the black, make it white, and white, and make it black. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about these constraint settings. What are these numbers? Why do we have negative numbers? What do they mean? And how do we use these to create the ideal brush that we want? All right, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.